How to survive the deep sea. With the help of air, sunlight and water, we are surviving in the soil of the earth. But beneath the surface of the planet, there is another world. Despite being far from the outside world, there are still many survivors. We're referring to the deep sea. But most importantly, how did the lives survive there? Have you ever wondered? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back everyone. Before we start, subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. Having said that, let's begin. Ocean life has had billions of years to adapt and evolve, leading to a wide variety of beautiful and even strange forms. According to theories, all of the numerous species that are alive today have descended from the ocean life that first gave rise to existence. To those of us who live on land, these deep sea creatures may look strange, but that is only because they have evolved precisely to survive in these hostile habitats that are so dissimilar from our own. Now, let's go deeper and see certain techniques of survival deep in the blue. So basically, the sun is the primary source of energy for most life on Earth. The energy from sunshine is used by trees and plants to mix water and carbon dioxide to create sugars, which are then used as foods by all kinds of creatures, including us. The school textbooks taught us that photosynthesis is the name of this process. Another process called chemosynthesis occurs deep in the ocean. Hundreds of meters away from the sun, tiny microorganisms mix water and carbon dioxide to create sugar using chemical energy rather than light. The wide variety of habitats and unique environmental circumstances in the maritime environment has allowed marine organisms to adapt. Although there are many different types of adaptations, they can generally be divided into three basic categories. Structural, physiological and behavioral. For survival, coastal plants require unique adaptations. For instance, some varieties of seaweed strongly cling to rocks to prevent being carried away by waves. They are shielded from being damaged by the waves due to the strong and leathery nature of their leaf-like fronds. Furthermore, unique endemic species that live in or close to deep sea hydrothermal vents are found in deep sea habitats. These species exhibit strong vertical patterning in the case of pelagic animals and acute horizontal patterning in the case of benthic animals. The ability of deep sea animals to withstand the pressure and temperature conditions of their habitats is a result of widespread biochemical adaptations. Proteins exhibit increased structural stability in comparison to homologous proteins from cold adopted shallow living species. Membrane fluidities are adapted to deep sea pressures and temperatures. And enzymes exhibit reduced function perturbation by pressure. The enzymes and mitochondria of animals inhabiting the warmest inhabited sections of the hydrothermal vent ecosystems are adapted to high pressure and relatively high temperatures. The capacity for ATP turnover in locomotory muscle is significantly reduced in bathypelagic fishes, which have a low metabolic rate. The significance of biochemical adaptations in producing species distribution patterns and suitable rates of metabolic turnover in various habitats is thus demonstrated by deep sea organisms. Some marine mammals, like whales, travel great distances during their migration and spend time in Arctic, tropical and temperate areas. They are endothermic, or warm-blooded, which allows them to adapt to these temperature variations. This indicates that they can maintain a steady body temperature independent of the water's temperature around them. Many of them use their own light for seeing. Many animals that use bioluminescence to create their own light can be found in the twilight or mesopelagic zone. Some dragonfish also have the unusual ability to perceive and emit red light, which is uncommon in the deep ocean. Red light is the first to be filtered out by the water at a depth of roughly 100 meters, since it has the longest wavelength. This is why many organisms in the deep water are red, effectively renders them invisible. And the final one is behavioral adaptation, which helps organisms survive, is known as behavioral adaptation. For instance, whales' sounds enable them to communicate, navigate and hunt for prey to locate appropriate locations where they can settle and undergo metamorphosis, crab larvae use sounds. On the New Zealand continental shelf, bryozoan colonies are abundant. They have grouped together to increase their chances of finding food and surviving predators, even though they are made up of hundreds of small individual animals and seem like plants. See, it's all about survival, isn't it? What do you think? Feel free to express your thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for the day, guys. We hope you liked the video. Please click the like button if you did. And if you're new here, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.